welcome to the very first card subject to change top 10. Now prepare yourself for 10 of the worst gimmicks in pro wrestling history. Now, around the time they gave Chavo this gimmick, he was really struggling to find a role in the WWE. So, Guerrero denounced his Hispanic heritage and became a stereotypical white conservative Anglo-American man named Kerwin White. He even had a catchphrase, if it ain't white, it ain't right. He went as far as dyeing his hair blonde and came to the ring on a golf cart. He would even make insensitive remarks about minorities, including against Shelton Benjamin. Huh. That caddy looks familiar. Get a load of this dude. Before he became Savio Vega in the WWF, Juan Rivera took on the role of an Asian ninja named Quang, who was managed by Harvey Whippleman. Sometimes he spit mist in the face of his foes to win a match, threw some kicks, basically a mood of ripoff. I know what you're thinking looking at him though. There's no way this guy's a ninja. Ooh, hey, this guy might be a ninja. Ah, the Attitude Era. It created many of the greatest stars in wrestling history, except for Bieber Cleavage. The WWE decided to have Mosh of the Headbangers play a weird character based off the 1950s television show Leave It to Beaver. This gimmick would have him up here with his mother, Mrs. Cleavage, and the two would exchange weird sexual innuendos implying incest. Thank God it only lasted about a month and had no chance of getting over with the crowd. At least I hope. Does mother's little Harry Beaver want some of mother's milk? Yeah, no chance. <laughs> really? Okay. In 1995, the WWE had the idea of putting a giant bull's head on Mike Halleck and calling him Mantar. Among his cattle mannerisms, he would headbutt opponents as well as moo at them. Obviously, he knows what he's People were paid to come up with that. <laughs> a mooing wrestler. But, unfortunately, the crowd just couldn't get behind it. Can you believe that? Antar. Trying to it. Wait a whoa, minute. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He'll gore you. Watch it. That, that. Okay, it's, it's kind of stupid. Hindsight's 2020, I guess. Before the Yeti, before the stupid ECW zombie, there was Prince Karis. Way back in the good old days of Smoky Mountain. My favorite part is when James Mitchell, then known as Daryl Van Horn, yeah, that's a Witches of Eastwick reference. He would take out this ancient scroll and recite from it to resurrect Prince Karis during a, a double down or if he just took a move, and he would sit up like the Undertaker. It's pretty awesome. In a so ridiculously bad it's awesome kind of way. Eh, makes me laugh. <laughs> He's a mummy. That's right. Balls Mahoney was once the Earth 2 version of Santa Claus. The exact opposite of Old Saint Nick. Inverted color scheme and all. Where Santa was kind and generous, Xanta stole presents from children and was a professional wrestler. I guess that's it. But hey, Ted DiBiase was his manager. To this day, I still wonder what the hell they were thinking. Brad Armstrong was bitten by a radioactive spider... Pinata? A Raptor man vows to keep WCW's ring safe from all evildoers with his repertoire of arm drags and headbutts. Just like a spider. Needless to say, Marvel took quite the lawsuit at WCW, which made them drop the gimmick fast. But a Raptor man will always live by the words he stole from Uncle Ben. With great power comes. Hey, streamers! In 2005, he played the Russian in The Punisher. In 1991, he was Super Shredder in TMNT's Secret of the Ooze. And shortly before that, he was a wizard? Yes, Kevin Nash was a wizard once. 
No wonder he's so overly protective about his spots. So WCW decided they needed more movie-based characters. So they looked to Wizard of Oz for inspiration. It makes sense. Thick bushy beard, green robe, and complete with a midget companion? That's intimidating. Unfortunately, this gimmick didn't last very long. He just wasn't able to tap into that magic in the ring to get himself over. Oh god, no, don't, don't, don't end on that. Okay. There's not much I can say about Dragon Master. You know what, just, just watch the video. Jerry Lawler, if you decide that you don't want to quit, this is what's going to take you out of the territory, honey! Uh, uh. And the Dragon Master. This is the Dragon Master, honey. Come on up. I don't know, just leave him in there. No. No, he's going to come out. Step on out of here. And you know why I'm going to have him step out? Take your time. This is my television show now, honey. Step on out. The reason I want him out here, come on over here, Dragon Master. The reason I want him out here, how many times have you heard professional wrestling organizations around the world say, we have a seven-foot giant? We have a eight foot giant and you get to the arena and he's five foot ten well honey this man is seven foot three and jerry lawler this is a man you can't beat take off the mask now people are saying why do you got that goofy hood on him let me tell you something honey look at this jerry lawler spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine <laughs> just another guy falling victim to that old uswa gimmick equation What's that, you ask? Well, it's this. Some dude, plus Spirit Halloween, or whatever the equivalent may have been back then, equals gimmick. Simple enough. And trust me, they'll use this equation a lot. Another one from good old USWA. They have a knack for this stuff. Tagar was the lord of the volcano, obviously complete with a distorted Ole Anderson-like voiceover for his debut promo. Those who have crossed me have had their bodies broken and their blood spilled. Never have I looked back. Heading down to the ring with his magic volcanic shield, there were not many who would dare cross him. Oh, this guy right here. We saw some... Oh, oh look at that. Who did that? Whoa. If they were to cross him, they may fall victim to his mighty volcanic elbow drop. The Volcano Bow. I don't know if he actually called it that. Very little is known about this individual, or what could have ever happened to this volcanic god among men. But there have been rumors. Yet another one of USWA's outlandish characters brought in for Lawler that lasted no more than a month. Fire of lava. What a month that must have been. You did that. Whoa. 